Now we're joined by uh, Kilmallock uh, manager uh, Fintan O'Connor ahead of the Limerick Senior Hurling Championship final. Uh, Fintan, yesterday, it was only yesterday that you, you won that semi final in Brough in, in horrendous conditions. Very, very tight game, I suppose. How, how are the bodies this morning? How are the heads? Everyone, everyone must be thrilled, I suppose, to get into another county final. Ah, yeah, look, you'd, I suppose you'd, you'd wake up in better form this morning after, after ha- what happened yesterday, and, and you'd feel, for, in fairness, you'd feel for doing as well. Um, but um, look, a semi final is about winning, and it was just lovely to get, get over the line. It wasn't pretty uh, um, at any stage, but it was just nice to get over the line, you know. Your first year involved with Kamalik, first year involved in, in Limerick Senior Hurling. If, if you wanted any, any, I suppose, example of what Limerick Senior Hurling is about, I think that game will, will live long in the memory. That will show you what it's all about. Yeah, look, in fairness, you'd have to credit both teams for what they brought yesterday. And as I said, it wasn't always the best hurling or, or the prettiest hurling, but it was the, the sheer determination and, and will to win, I suppose, by both sides. Um, was, was very impressive. And, and look, the standard of the championship has been excellent in, in fairness from... I suppose, as you said, my first year involved in it, that a lot of teams have, have just some real quality all through the team. You know, it's not just one or two; they're really, really good teams. You know, attention quickly turns to the final uh, against the Pearshig. Obviously, the Pearshig in the last you know ten, twelve years have been the, the real the benchmark. But I suppose the fact that you're coming in as champions, it, it, it makes it very, very, very much a fifty-fifty game for people. But it, it does promise. If you're a neutral, I know you're not, but it, it does promise to be an absolutely thrilling game for anyone to go out and see. Yeah, look, um, I suppose neither team will be worried about <laughs> the thrilling game. It'll be just both teams want to win. And uh, as you said, look, New Piercy have been the, the benchmark in Limerick over the last decade or, or more. And um, I know I was at a couple of club finals they were involved in, Munster finals. So look, and um, like I said about all the teams in Limerick, New Piercy no different, have star quality all throughout the field. Look at Mike Casey, Will there, um, Peter, and you can go on. I'm just going to leave out someone by, by starting to name. But like, I remember Ron Lynch playing college at Hurling and he was a phenomenal talent, you know, and just having like that kind of quality and him not to be considered one of their star mate. Do you know not saying, but they just have an excellent team uh, and quality all throughout the field. And look, um, we're under no illusions as to what we're facing in two weeks either, you know. Yeah, the Napier Street uh, winners over South Liberties in their semi-final probably had it all their own way in the second half, but no, never less impressive. I, I'm sure you caught some bit, bit of that game. Never less they were impressive in how they performed. You know, I think they hit maybe 116, 117 from play. No matter who the opposition, that that's good scoring this time of year when the ground, as as you attest, has gotten softer and conditions are not as not as favourable. But you know, they've they've threats from all over really, and and, and there, I suppose as you, as you've alluded there, there's no one area that you can really nail down. You, they, no. they are, they, they've they've just stepped. And as you said, there's threats from all over. Like you look at. Um Connor Weiland, David Dempsey, they, they have ball winners, they have score and power, Breen, do you know what I mean? They just have quality all over and look, it'll be, um, it'll be, t- it'll be tough for us in a couple of weeks' time and look, we'll hopefully have threats from all over as well and make it tough on them. And um, look, there was very little in it the, the day we played the, the group game earlier on in the year now, I know. Um, <laughs> the conditions were slightly different. It was lovely summer's evening, and the ground was lovely and hard, and that. So um, it'll be a different game in two weeks' time, and I think it'll be down, down to kind of again the two teams putting it all in the line and just seeing who gets a bit of luck. The panel this year has evolved. It evolved even yesterday with, with Robbie Egan coming on and and, and come, kicking kicking that goal. I think he was someone that would have primarily played with the intermediates this year, if I'm not mistaken. But he's he's certainly. He's shown what the value of being a, a, a panel member that it is. It, it no longer is a 15-man game, as we all know, but it shows the, 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 the value of someone being patient, waiting for the opportunity, and then, of course, grasping it with both hands when, when the opportunity arises. Yeah, look, I think in fairness to, to actual Limerick, um, have showed in the last couple of years winning all Ireland that it's, it's kind of been more than the 15 that started. It's the lads that are coming on that are nearly finishing the game at times that are... Are nearly getting the job done, and, and I suppose every club team is nearly following a lead from All Ireland champions or teams that are successful. And, and look, um, we've emphasised that um, all throughout the year. And, and when the Limerick lads were away, lads probably played games and challenge games and, and matches and, and put their hand up. And, and Robbie, I suppose, came on yesterday, but like David Wolf, um, Connor Hanley, I know. Um, Paulie O'Brien came on yesterday, probably used to start and ha- picked up an injury a couple of weeks ago. So, look, it's nice to have 19, 20, 21, 22 lads even that are, are fighting for 15 spots and that makes makes the team better. And I know, look, New Pearson are, are no different. They're, they have quality to come on as well and, and probably change the game. 
the, this group of players, uh, you know, the, the, I suppose the older guys you mentioned, like we say Graham Mulcahy and, and, and Paddy there, they, they've, they've won titles in the last decade, there's no doubt about that, but they haven't been able to retain one. Is, is that a motivating factor? Has that been even alluded to by, by people who think it's gone back to the 70s since, the, or since Kilmallock were able to hold on to a crown? You know, it, it would, it's always nice to win one, but to, to, to retain it, I'm sure, would be sweet for, for this group. Yeah, look, I, I don't even think... We definitely hasn't been mentioned, but I heard TJ Reid yesterday after the Valley Hale match. I think he said something like, ah, "It was only us winning another match, and like I think they were going for five in a row." Um, so maybe their approach might be something that is the, is the way to go. Like, and it's very cliche to say, "Oh, it's one game at a time" or whatever. But I think if you start thinking too much about the significance of it, it gets into your head, and you're just better maybe just just going out and playing. And look, it's a final, and a final in its own right is, is important enough for a, for anyone to count. Final is a big deal. So. Um, I'm sure both teams will be just just